Thanks for joining me in this distillation of the Breathing in Zazen chapter of Katsuki Cicada's book, Zen Training. Before we start, if you'd like to see more videos on Zen, Taoism, Western philosophy, and meditation, can you please do me a favor and hit pause and subscribe to the channel? Also, please leave a thumbs up and tell a friend if you like the content. Now, onto the distillation. The scientific approach Sakita took in the previous chapter continues in this discussion on breathing. This chapter is chock full of definitions, which I'm going to start off with with basically a glossary of terms he uses when breathing and don't really worry too much about memorizing them i hope it will be clear as i explain things and you can always pause and rewind i've tried to simplify sakita's explanation in the distillation and hopefully i've succeeded so here are some definitions First is the diaphragm. That's a sheet of muscle separating the thoracic cavity, which is where the heart and lungs are, from the abdomen. When the diaphragm contracts, the thoracic cavity goes in, and due to the negative pressure, you breathe in. Tidal volume is the amount of air we normally use in an inhale and an exhale cycle. And that's only about 500 milliliters. The horizon of breathing is the volume of the lungs at the end of an exhalation under normal breathing. So that's how much is left after you've let out the air when you're normally breathing. And that's about 2,300 milliliters. Quite a bit left, actually. Uh, the expiratory reserve volume is extra air that can be squeezed out after you've already had a normal exhalation, and that is 1,100 milliliters of air. And there's a lot of focus on this in this chapter on Zazen breathing. Now, there's also the residual lung volume. And that's the amount of air remaining in the lungs, even though you've tried pushing out all the air. There's just going to be this 1,200 milliliters of air that's left, no matter what, as long as you're on dry land. If you're underwater, it's a different story, and you're in trouble. Inspiration is just a fancy way of saying inhale. It's not what a novelist needs to get started on a book. The external intercostals are muscles on the outside of the ribs, yet between them, they assist with breathing and they elevate the ribs while you're inhaling. In contrast to the internal intercostals, which lower the ribs during a forced exhalation, and they're found between the ribs on the inside area between the ribs. The thoracic cage is essentially the ribs, the sternum, which is the long bone in the middle of your chest, the vertebrae along the ribs in your back, and the costal cartilage. Now, this definition might not be good enough for med school, but it's going to be good enough for us. The total lung capacity you have is the maximum amount of air you can take into your lungs, and that's about 5,700 milliliters. A deep exhalation is one of the cycles in breathing in Zazen, where most of the reserve volume is exhaled, in contrast to a normal, more shallow exhalation, where we just let out that tidal volume. And vital capacity is the maximum amount of air brought into the lungs after a deep exhalation and a maximum inhalation. That's 4,500 milliliters. The tendon is the area behind the belly button, basically. Uh, it's an area in the lower abdomen, often considered the focus of attention and the seat of spiritual power. 
normal respiration is breathing as we do it in a regular inhalation and exhalation cycle in contrast to when we do a deep exhalation the volume of air when we do normal respiration is our tidal volume thoracic inspiration is chest breathing uh, inhalation that causes the ribs to move further out and tension is upward rather than toward the tendon and this is something we're going to seek to avoid in zazen in contrast we have abdominal inhalation and that's basically the zen version of belly breathing if you have kids you know what that means uh, when the lower abdomen inflates the diaphragm gets pulled down along with the pleural cavity since the cavity and diaphragm are pulled down this increases pressure in the tendon and that is what we are seeking during zazen this type of breathing should be used during zazen rather than a thoracic breathing uh, one other thing if you have the book it might be useful to actually refer to those definitions from time to time cicada's text is great but some of the definitions simply aren't in there and unless you've gone to medical school or remember some biology, you're not going to know what they mean. Uh, I'm going to put those definitions in the description for YouTube. So you can have it as a reference in case you're reading the book. That might be useful. Uh, now that those are out of the way, we can get into the text, starting with how much air we breathe in. We're going to have that residual lung capacity of about 1,200 milliliters of air, no matter how much we exhale out, at least while we're walking around on dry land. Our muscles can't squeeze out all of the air out of our lungs. So with that residual volume, we can still remain alive, even though we forced out as much air as possible. In Zazen, we are concerned with how we exhale the air between that residual volume that we can't get rid of and her normal tidal volume. And that difference is the expiratory reserve volume. Now, we do so-called normal breathing in Zazen, yes, uh, using the tidal volume for three to five breaths, but then we exhale so that we get into that reserve volume using a deep exhalation the further you go in that deep exhalation and you delve into that reserve volume the sooner and deeper you're going to reach samadhi in terms of exactly how you should breathe you should only perform abdominal respiration so that keeps tension and pressure in the tendon which thoracic respiration simply can't do in fact, chest breathing is just going to decrease the pressure in the tendon. Now, we don't want that, for sure. Then there's a difference between normal abdominal breathing and what we do in Zazen. So when you're doing normal abdominal breathing, you would just contract the abdominal muscles. Uh, in Zazen, your diaphragm is going to resist that contraction of the abdominal muscles. And that yields slow exhale. Cicada says to try to do this. Um, just hold your breath. And then at the same time, try to exhale slowly. That's going to keep the tension up in the tendon. I know it's kind of difficult, but uh, when the diaphragm and abdominal muscles are resisting each other equally, your breath can almost come to a stop. And so it is almost imperceptible to barely feel the breath going out. Don't try to make your breath totally stop, though. If you'll feel uncomfortable if you try to do that. The previous chapter had a Zazen experiment where you would control thoughts arising by holding your breath. That came from the control of the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm, just as I described. The abdominal muscles have a huge role that they play day to day, and they're contracted whether you're doing heavy exercise or even more subtle movements like in writing. 
Uh, they're used when you're suppressing motion or resisting pain. So those muscles are pretty important. You can look around and see there's been a lot of emphasis in exercising the core. So that's where our abdominal muscles actually lie. So it is the exhalation when we go beyond our usual breathing where we have the most effect and tension in the tandem. However, we don't want to exhale too slowly, nor do we start to exhale deeply when there's a substantial amount of air in the lungs. Otherwise, you may feel uncomfortable. When first attempting a deep exhalation, let out some of your breath quickly, then you can start to exhale slowly. You don't want to be exhaling slowly when you're in that realm where you'd be breathing normally. Don't exhale slowly while you're still exhaling that tidal volume of 500 milliliters of air in a normal breath. You want to be exhaling slowly when you're in that reserve volume. Nor should you inhale too slowly. Again, you may feel uncomfortable. After a deep exhalation, it's okay, if not necessary, to quickly inhale, but don't gasp. You know, we don't want to have that chest or thoracic breathing. If you have an uneasy inhale or exhale, that's going to lead to an uneasy mental state. That won't be the best condition for you to reach sanity. So remember, we want to avoid that chest breathing. So after a deep exhalation, relax the diaphragm and abdominal muscles. But just at that point where we'd have that normal inhalation, where we'd be doing the tidal breathing, as you defined it, we are going to exert the abdominal muscles to push out the abdomen with that side effect of preventing chest breathing. Regarding exhaling, when we're doing a normal exhale. That can be done normally just with our abdominal muscles, but with a deep exhale when we're past that point where we'd normally exhale, again, past that point where we do tidal breathing, begin pulling back on the diaphragm. We're focusing on the tendon at that point. So who knew there was going to be so much to breathing? In reality, it's a bit easier than it sounds. And here's the short and sweet version of it. Breathe normally from the abdomen for three to five breaths, never from your chest. Then we'll do a deep exhale. First, let some of the air out from your belly and then pull back slowly with your diaphragm while slowly exhaling from your abdomen. Maybe it helps to imagine that you're swimming and slowly releasing bubbles. Remember that the diaphragm muscle is right under your lungs and rib cage. And when you're at the point when you do a normal exhale, do so from your abdomen. And remember, if you're feeling any discomfort, you should change the point when you're doing the slow part of the exhalation. Don't start it too soon or go too slow. You're not going to reach 70 through masochism after all. So that's how Sakita suggests the breathing should go in Zazen. You can take it for what's worth, but I found it to be useful. You may need to follow a different pattern of breathing for medical reasons, or you're following a different practice. Zen isn't a cookie cutter meditation, at least not to me. We're all doing things a little bit different because we're all different people. So with that, I'm going to take my leave. But feel free to rewatch the video or any of the videos in Zen training, as well as any of the other videos I have out there. And of course, please refer to the definitions that I'm going to be putting in the description. That may be useful if you're, you know, you get hung up on some of the terminology. But I hope to see you soon on Sloppy Zen. Have a good one. Only the finest. Luxurious love. What do these buttons do? Priceless. Yes.
That is what I like to see.